Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a progress bar in Sprite Kit so that you can make something that looks like this loading for one of your games. Okay, in Xcode, I've created a new iOS game project. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a Swift file for our R progress bar class. Let's call this progress bar. And we want to import Sprite Kit. And let's create our class. We have type sk sprite node. So let's create a bunch of variables that we're going to need in this class. We need a progress variable, we need a max progress amount, uh, we need a progress bar sprite node, a progress container sprite node, and some textures for both of them. The textures I've already imported as progress bar and progress bar container, they're just boxes with different colors in them. And we'll also need a CG rect, which will be associated with the game scenes frame. So we can get the game scenes frame size and pass it into this class to determine how wide and how tall we want the progress bar to be. We'll also need our override init and our required init. So let's add the override first. And then we'll get an error from Xcode saying we need the required. So let's change this to fix. And this should be SK node, not sprite node. Then that error message will go away. Now we want to create a function that will build out our progress bar initially. We're not going to be calling it from the init because we need to get the size and the height of the frame in the scene and we can't pass that into our override init. So we create a separate function that we can then call inside of our game scene. And in here we're going to build out the progress bar and the progress bar container and then add them as children to the SK node that we're in. We want the progress bar container dot size dot width to be equal to our scene frame dot width times 0 0.7 so 70 percent of the width and the same thing with the height we'll change this to 10 percent of the height And now we need another function that will get the scene frame that we're using here that we can also call from our game scene. Back in our game scene, we are ready to create a progress bar and add it as a child. If you recall, we need to call progress bar dot get scene frame. And we want to just take our frame here from the game scene and progress bar dot build progress bar. So if we did this correctly, when we run this, we should see a black container and then part of an orange bar within that black container. You'll notice that the orange bar is placed exactly in the middle. That's the default point. So if we want to change this, we would have to change the position to be over here. Now that's basically going to be half of the entire width of the orange bar. So whatever the max width is for the orange bar, we want to cut that in half and set the position to be negative of that value. And that will put it over here. So let's do that now by coming back to progress bar. Progress bar dot position dot x equals negative scene frame dot width times 0 0.65 0 0.65 we're using as the maximum width that the progress bar will build out to and divide that by 2.0 we see that our bar is over on the left side since we're going to be using this 0 0.65 times scene frame dot width a few times let's copy it and create a 
private var max progress var width cg float and set it to zero initially then when we call our get scene frame function we can set the max progress bar width equal to scene frame dot width times 0 0.65 and now let's copy that and paste it in here and the final function that we want to add here is going to be the one that builds out the progress bar according to the progress so function update progress bar to build the progress bar we're going to run an sk action of resize on the width of that progress bar so progress bar dot run sk action dot resize to width over a duration the width that we want to resize to is going to be a cg float of progress divided by max progress times our max progress bar width and the duration 0 0.2 Now to run this update progress bar, let's go back to our game scene. And just for simplicity's sake and the tutorial, we will make a timer that will repeat inside of this function. You don't normally want to do that. You want to rely on the update method for timing in SpriteKit, but I'm just doing this for simplicity's sake. So let's try to run this and see what we get. You'll see the progress bar is building to the left. It's building the wrong way. So let's fix that now. Back in our progress bar here, we will come down to, we'll come to progress bar and we'll set the anchor point equal to a CG point. Anchor it at zero and 0 0.5. Let's also set our initial width to be zero. So now when we run this, let's see what we get. We get our progress bar slowly building up. You can see that we are off by one. We have an off by one error. So just to change that, come back and set this to be greater than, instead of greater than or equal to. And let's run it again. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and have a great rest of the day.